we're going to show you how to standardize sodium hydroxide. So I have some potassium hydrogen phthalate. This substance is known for short as KHP, potassium hydrogen phthalate. And it is an acid anion salt of potassium. And it has one hydrogen that would be neutralized with sodium hydroxide. This substance is very stable. It's a powder that does not absorb moisture and it can last for many years if you keep the container closed. And so I use some of this to measure out 0 0.10 grams. So you can see the mass on the balance, uh, 0 .1, 0 0.410 grams or 0 0.411 grams. So let's record that. This is the mass of the KHP, 0 0.411 grams. And I'm going to use this mass to titrate with sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to transfer this very carefully. I'm going to show you how I transfer it. I put the weigh boat on my counter. And I'd like to transfer my solids in a wet way because then I know that the powder does not scatter into the air. So I put some water through it. There is a 200, 125 milliliter volumetric flask that's rinsed. So I'm going to transfer it into the flask. The quantity of water doesn't really matter because you're going to be titrating on a mole basis. And this is a complete reaction. So I'm going to show you how I transfer. I'm going to go ahead and wash this. So I'd like to rinse it like a few times with water. Again, as I said, quantity of water doesn't matter. So we can put more water through this. All of my 0.411 grams of KHP into this 125 ml flask. And the flask was rinsed with water. And before I start the titration, I want to make sure it's all dissolved. So I'm going to uh, stir this and make sure that the whole mass is dissolved and I've also rinsed my burette it's hard to see it but this burette is rinsed with uh, deionized water and I filled it with the sodium hydroxide solution that I prepared before and it has an approximate concentration of 0.1 molarity so I put a white background for my titration so I can see the color change and I'm going to use an indicator called phenol phthalein. This indicator is prepared in alcohol and I'm going to put like two or three drops of the indicator inside of the flask and it gives a it's colorless in the presence of a solution that's more acidic and the color will change to a slight pink, which indicates excess sodium hydroxide, which is roughly around the pH of 8.5 to 9, but it would be marking the end point of my titration. So I can go ahead and start, and I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide. I had zero to be red, so I had started with zero. And you can see that as the solution falls, onto the uh, solution, uh, the sodium hydroxide falls onto the contents of the flask. It turns into a pinkish color. I'm trying to show you that, but I'll have to wait till we get toward the end. So you can probably see that now. Where the solution falls, it's pink. So now I'm getting closer because there are flashes of pink with every drop of the uh, sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to put, slow down the rate of adding sodium hydroxide. So you can probably see how it turns into pink with every drop. So I wanted to get it to a faint pink color and no more intense. Let's see how good I can do that. So I'm using one hand to mix and one hand to add drop by drop. You can see the color change now, it's more pronounced, so I have to be a little bit more careful. I'm 
Okay, so I'm really close now. So notice how the color changes with one drop of, here's one drop added and it turns into pink. So you can now see every drop that falls, here's another drop, the pink tends to stay longer. So I know I'm close. So I'm just gonna let it go at this rate and see if I can hit it to the slight faint pink color. making the drop rate a little tiny bit faster. These are really fun lab work and I, I wish you could have done this in the lab but um, um, I'm doing it for you. At this point I'm going to wash the sides, side wall. I think I'm really close, but you can see that one drop makes a big difference. I'm probably only like a few drops away. So here it is. Every drop makes a huge difference. So I'm just going to let it fall and I bet you this may be it. Because I already see my slight faint pink color, it's hard for you to see it. But there's a hanging drop on the tip of this burette. I'm going to show you actually the hanging drop. So here it is. So I don't know, it's probably easy for you to see. So there is a hanging drop right there. So I'm going to wash this hanging drop. So look at the color. It's a faint pink color, but you're going to see a big difference right now. So I'm going to wash the hanging drop into the solution. Look how it turned pink. Mix it. There is my end point. So I was like less than a drop away from it and I caught it. And you can use this technique of washing the tip of the burette mm -hmm. and it will do the job for you. So this one uh, trial is done. And in order to have uh, reliable data, you need to do this two other times. But I want to show you. Uh, or I want you to see the volume so you can go ahead and read the volume I had set my burette to zero milliliter so before I started I was actually right where is my burette right here at the zero mark and then I dispensed uh, this volume so I want you to read this to the precision of the burette which is down to the hundreds of a milliliter so you have to estimate the last digit so I'm going to get this thing just right for you because it has to be really parallel so go ahead and read it okay I'm going to let you record that and uh, this volume of sodium hydroxide together with the 0.411 grams will allow us to calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide so you have uh, you have to set up the, your calculation using the chemical reaction and um, I'm going to let you go ahead and do that and calculate the molarity but um, let's do this uh, two other times so you can go ahead and calculate the molarity of sodium hydroxide now with this one trial and then I'm going to do this two more times and then give you the, the values and the titrations are exactly done the same way but uh, you also need the masses of each uh, KHP sample so I'll provide you with the mass of each KHP and uh, I'll provide you with the volume of the titrant sodium hydroxide and that's all you need to calculate the molarity of sodium hydroxide